on YouTube, but to love subscribers, kisses. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being a part of my station. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for all your likes and your comments. And Little Bit is at school. I have to go get her in about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to make this short, but I did want to get on here and thank all my subscribers for their loves and wishes for Little Bit's first day. And she loves school. Mommy is, the verdict is still out for her. She likes the school, but she still, it's going to take a minute for me to be more relaxed. I did, however, was able to come home and get a few things done. And, but yesterday I was in no shape to do a video, but let's get started. Kisses to all of you. So I wrote some notes down because there's not much going on. It's the same old, same old with Megan and Harry. But I want to start off with, I was at Sue's house today and it was interesting. That word on the street is, is that Megan, Harry is still requesting an apology from his family. And my first thought was, the re and the reason why um, Harry wants an apology, he wants them to apologize to Megan for how they treated her during the Queen's Jubilee. Now, whatever happened at the Jubilee, it's just, it, it, to me, they were in the background. And the reason why they were in the background is because, number one, they're not working royals anymore. And then number two is because they can't be trusted. And so the whole apology thing is a joke to me because Megan owes everyone in her list that she's offended, mistreated, blamed, um, ghosted, grifted, she owes all of them people in an apology. So in other words, she owes the royal family and Queen Elizabeth and everyone that she trashed during her 15 minutes of fame, um, she owes that to an apology to them. It's stupid. Megan needs an apology. This is why she needs an apology. She wants King Charles them to somewhat make an apology stating that, oh, it was all of their fault that Megan had to run from the UK. Megan left the U U UK because she, because she wanted to do her own thing and start her own fame and do her own thing. But she needed Harry to bring her into the limelight. He ne she needed Harry to, she, her being a D-lister wasn't enough. We didn't know who Megan was. And so in order for her to become something, then she needed Harry's, um, she needed his notoriety. And she knows that. It's not a secret. But she pretends like it's all, oh, Harry fell in love with her. She didn't, she wasn't really looking for a man and all this other stuff. It's a bunch of hoopla. Like I told you guys the other day, she slithered her way into the royal family and conned her way into there. And then Harry was hook, line, and sinker because he's an idiot. And so the, the, the mere fact that she wants an apology is distasteful to even bring it, to say it out of your mouth because she owes so many people an apology. For number one, she owes us an apology for going on national TV on that Oprah show, lying. And so until she's ready to face her accountability, what she's done to others, then why should anyone entertain anything that she's saying? It's just despicable to me that Megan goes around thinking she's entitled to um, apologies as if someone's mistreated her or done something wrong to her or she's this delicate flower that we need to cultivate and make sure she's taken care of because if we don't pat her on the back just right, everything would just go all kapook. No, what's happening is, is Megan needs King Charles to apologize so that she can look like the person that didn't lie and trash the family. No, that's not going to work. Even, uh, uh, 
I think it would be just crazy if they even looked like they wanted to apologize to this woman. This divorcee from America that conned her way into the royal family and treated it like some type of uh, job um, advancement. It's disgusting. First of all, I would stop inviting her to any of the royal events because they don't know how to act. It's like children. Like, okay, you can't go because you don't know how to sit up straight and act like a human being until you get a little older, then you can go. Well, she's 40-something years old and still don't know how to act. And so the king has to put out some demands to her. No cell phone, bring the kids, da 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 da, da and so forth and so forth. King Charles would like to see the, see the kids, but she wants an, an apology. And so to me, like... Sue said, I believe Megan holds those kids over as a, as a bargaining tool to say, okay, we're not coming over there if you don't treat us right. And we're not going to bring the kids either. I believe that that's her MO. I believe Megan is, you can call it threatening. You can call it bullying. You could call it withholding. You could call it um, bargaining. You could call it whatever you want to. I call it, call it despicable that she won't get herself on a plane and take those two babies over there so they can meet their relatives. No, making us on TIG and Brand and Spotify and Netflix and coming out and, and Taylor Swift, you know, all this gimmicky stuff that she's doing instead of looking at the family aspect of it and realizing that if she went through that angle of trying to get respect back from the people, that may help. But as long as she continues and the Sussex squad continues to try to go after the royal family for stupid stuff, then people will look at them shamely and be like, okay, they're still up to their stupid shenanigans. And so let me go back to the kids. I don't talk about them much because I don't need to. We never see them. We we don't know nothing about Lilibet and Prince Archie. Only thing, all, only kids we know about is those in the UK. And it's funny how I'm in the same country that she's in, Megan, and we still don't know nothing about the kids. And it just feels like she's holding them in this little cubby hole, uh, this closet, and saying, you know what? I can't let you out until I get the things that I need from these people, from here, from from my from King Charles. Until he allows me to be on the balcony and be a part of everything, then I'm not taking my kids over there. And I've already told you she's not going to let uh, Harry take them. Harry's a little, Harry is one of the kids too. He doesn't have a say in anything. He doesn't, mm -mm. I heard that they were having conflict on how they want to raise their kids. There's no conflict. The only conflict is Megan. Harry does whatever she says to do. Now, he may have an opinion, but that's all. Moving on. King Charles, I'm sorry, those are not your kids. They are, but they're not. In other words, in my family, when you don't see uh, a relative as much or their kids as much, we usually say, well, that they are our kids, but we don't get to see them much, so it is what it is. That's how it is with Megan and Harry. You don't get to see the kids, so you kind of say, well, that's, you know, we have kids, but they, we don't. I don't know. I, I know I'm trying to say something, but I want to get it. I don't want it to sound like they're not but they are. Meaning, if I don't get to see you at least once a year, then how is that a bond? How is that communicating? How is that a relationship? Megan is not trying to have the kids have a relationship with King Charles. She's not. That's why she flew the kids. That's why she flew over here to hide them away real quick so that she could have full, full with their, her kids, she can have full control over it. But meaning that Harry doesn't have a, a say. Harry can't say, come on, little Archie, let's get on the plane and go see Grandpa Charles. 
Mm -mm. And while she's building up her reputation and trying to make us see something different in her foul, we don't because of this is because we see that you're not a very nice person, that you won't even take the kids over there to see their grandfather that they have never seen before, but you're gonna bestow titles on them and call the family racist and say that they're not gonna get titles after you gave them titles and they still can't see the kids, Megan? When I look at her now, I look at her differently. I don't look at her as someone that is um, of any value. Sorry, I look at her as less than a D-lister. I look at her as someone with no integrity that thinks about themselves only. And I'm finding that those kind of people you really just want to stay away from. Anyway, I think it's despicable that she won't let any of her relatives see the kids. Because all we're hearing right now is how Megan is going to Taylor Swift's concert. I don't care that she went to Taylor Swift's concert, and I don't care if her and Taylor Swift's are friends. What does that mean? That Okay, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that Megan's running around with friends, hugging and kissing, and, and hanging out at Taylor Swift's um, um, concert, and then going to the Barbie movie like she's some type of socialite. But even if she is this social life, how's it, how does that change who she is inside? How does that change my feelings about who she is because she went to a concert, because she went to a barbie show, because she's friends with Oprah, she's friends with um, all these A-listers? That doesn't make her popularity and her reputation better than it was the day before. See, I'm a hugger. I, I love people. I have two friends next to me. See, my hairdresser and this other lady. See, I have people that like me. You can have a whole concert of people that like you. You got more people that don't. And those are the people that you need to be trying to figure out how to get in the good graces of. And starting with letting the kids see the family. Moving on. You, you're, this is what I don't get, and I think this is stupid. Megan thought that being the Duchess of Sussex, and it did work, was going to bring her reputation up, and it did. But when we found out who the real Megan was, her reputation dropped, and the Duchess of Sussex, it, it holds no weight over here. And so now she's trying to hang out with all these people to say, look, I have friends. Look, A-listers like me. Look, I'm a socialite. Look, I got it going on. Again, that doesn't make your popularity and your reputation great. It's because you know these people and that you rub shoulders with these people, especially Oprah, because Oprah stuff is in the toilet. She went, I'm switching, Oprah got on whatever plane or whatever. Here go Gail. Yeah, I was talking to Oprah and she didn't even hesitate. She just got right to the door and said, I'm headed out as we speak to go and uh, check on the relics, check on the people in Maui. No, you wasn't. You was trying to, you wanted us to pat you on the back Oprah and say what a well job you're over there doing, helping those people. No, helping those people would be writing a nice, big, nice check and, and giving it to them instead of saying what you're going to do later. Nobody talks about, well, I, I do it, but why would she talk about something she could do now that she's going to do later? I'm going to continue with the efforts of um, helping everyone. And then when the dust settles, I'm going to give financially. What dust? They need the money now, Oprah, not when the dust settles, not when you got back, go back to your little cubby hole, your little mansion, wherever you living in. It look really disgusting. Stay in the house, write a check or whatever you want to do, but you don't need a film camera crew following you around, patting you on the back and saying how wonderful Oprah is to be over here helping. 
No, like someone said, she's more and more like Megan than we know. Something about Oprah doing a, um, it's going to be, honey, what time is it? Oprah is going to be doing an interview on Britney Spears. I like Britney Spears. I know she's had some, some mental issues and people taking advantage of her and just psychological stuff. And I'm sure she's seen it all. But of all the people to interview her, why Oprah? Get someone else. And it's not going to be the biggest interview of all times. It will be for some because people like Britney. But I'm not. I'm not. The TIG. Let's talk about the TIG. I said it in my last video. Honey! Hold on. Okay, so I got to leave in a few minutes, guys. Let's talk about the TIG real quick. So, it's, to, <laughs> you don't marry a prince and then you give up your small life or the life that you used to live and then decide, uh-oh, I'm going back to it. It just makes no sense. It looks like she's resurrecting something that was dead. The TIG is, to me, is not going to be on the level of Ooh, excellence that she thinks. It's it's a billion steps down to her being a royal. And having a TIG is not a talent. Gwyneth Patro has whatever her little, what she has going on. And the word on the street is, is that she's trying to mimic, you know, Gwyneth and have that kind of status. Well, that's been gone. Because, Gwen, first of all, Gwyneth has a line, a body of work. Megan doesn't. Like one of the royal stations said, Megan tried to write a, be an a author, a producer, a, a actress, a, a philanthropist, a influencer. And everything that she's done has failed in a sense. It didn't get the level of accolades that she thought she was going to get. I didn't buy the bench. Did you? Last thing, I just think she's so desperate and so, it to me, the TIG is so gimmicky. Here's this pencil. Megan didn't make this pencil. She doesn't own this pencil. She didn't create this. She's not a scientist. She's not like the, um, like she created something from the beginning and then it becomes something really great. And so now her reputation is all wonderful. No, the TIG was after a wine that she likes and that's why she named it the TIG. And so she's just going to be advertising stuff, which is not a talent. It's just, she's just doing stuff. A talent is acting. A talent is having a brand. A talent is having a great reputation and a great popularity. And before you can have any of those things, you have to be popular. And she's not. So this TIG thing, like Redbird said, most of the people that looks at this TIG thing are just going to be curious. Some are going to be going on there just to see how just... To look at it and be negative about it because that's what they look for. And others are not going to even care. And eventually it's just going to be like, oh, that's that. So I just, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't think the TIG is a good idea. I just think that as she keeps pushing herself into this brand, Hollywood, I want to be this great person, it keeps falling flat. Because no matter how many times she's come out this week or last week to show us, it's been scrutinized. Moving on. Tom Bauer. Tom Bauer says, Megan is out there trying to show us how she's this one man show. Like, Harry's gone. I'm doing this alone. And he was the problem. I'm going to be the one that's going to elevate my status and everything up to here. You needed Harry to do everything that you're doing. You need the royal family to become this greatness. You still need the very people that you connived and, and manipulated your way into their home. You still need those very people to become because without them, you fall flat. 
And so good luck on your one man show. And last but not least, Invictus. Harry's population pop, popularity is shot too. His reputation is shot too. So he, him putting his name on, he this is his baby. Invictus is his baby. But he has lost so much support when he trashed his family and allowed this woman to go on the Oprah show and all the rest of her shenanigans to do what they did. It's going to make the Invictus have a tainted disgusting look at it and that's unfortunate because it's supposed to be for the veterans like someone said Harry needs to remove himself from it because his popularity is putting a very bad ding on it and I don't think it's going to get when is it coming out first of all is it out I'm not watching it Sue Smith's not watching it it's on Netflix. I don't even have Netflix. So it's not like I'm going ru to rush out and sign back up because I signed out when they put that debacle docu-series up there. Anyway, I'm out of here. Harry's, it's his charity work that he did or used to do. It's falling flat because of the, how he treats his family and the way he treated his family. And so we don't see the great love and kind and sweetness that we once saw from Harry. And the Invictus falls flat because of their spokesperson. It does. Harry's reputation, popularity is shot. And so therefore, and the reasons... The, he trashed his family and no one has a taste for that. And now when you look at even the commercial or whatever they got going on with the Invictus, you know, kudos to those veterans. But unfortunately, your spokesperson is not, it's not the best. And it's not the best in this way that it's not going to get the accolades that it needs to push this Invictus for Netflix to get their money back. Let's just put it that way. It's the truth. Harry has managed to screw that up. The love that he had from the people. That's why we cared about his causes. That's why we gave to his charities. They, not me. That's why people cared because we thought he came from the royal family and he was this great humanitarian, this great charity. He could do that. But of course, she swooped him away over here to the United States. And since then, everything has been going downhill. And this Invictus coming, it's, it's almost like they're trying to put a Band-Aid over the, the sores. Let's just put a Band-Aid over what Harry and Meghan has done and let's push out the TIG and let's push out the Invictus. Let's push her out there. WME, it's not working. Yes, people are going to click. Yes, people are going to watch, but not on the level that we want. Kisses to you guys. I will chat with you in a few days. Don't forget to hit like and hit comment. I'm going to get my baby. Bye-bye.